you're in for a treat. Phil Schneider has 17 years experience working in the government black projects. He carried a level three security clearance. He's a former government geologist and engineer in the black projects, underground bases at areas 51, S4, and Los Alamos. He's gonna expand your mind here this morning. Please welcome Mr. Phil Schneider. I'm Phil Schneider. Uh, I spent 17 years in black budget programs, um, government geologist, as engineer, structural engineer with aerospace applications. Uh, Self-taught metallurgist became uh, uh, kind of famous in my own right. Um, I basically uh, would have a set of notes here, but they're unavailable. <laughs> all this melee. Up here I have different artifacts uh, explaining uh, some of them are alien metals that have been produced both on this planet and the confines of outer space that are now used in all stealth aircraft. All stealth aircraft for instance, all black jets, uh, what you're seeing of, of black helicopters and the like, uh, the skins and the coatings and the residues that are used predominantly in the in the aircraft themselves, in the airframes, and the in the rotor blades, and the fans, and in some cases in submarines, uh, special titanium hulls, and the Phoenix class submarines now. Uh, all these come from. All this has come from alien technology. 1947 is what the public has been told. Uh, something crashed in the backyard in New Mexico, a place called Roswell, New Mexico. Unfortunately, that's what the public's been told. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years, and they first saw their glimpse of what was going on as early as 1909 in the American Southwest. Now, Army cavalry evidently were chasing some bandits, and they entered this cave. They were holed up in a cave, and what they found in there was flying disks and, and little gray guys and all kinds of weird things and they didn't know how to explain that and they wrote them down as best they could and it's been in secret archives ever since. And it's up in the, it's in the down by the Truth or Consequences uh, area of New Mexico. Well, the alien thing is more than just a what I'd call a non-visible threat. We on the surface, first of all, all information dealing with alien or alien reproduced technology or alien reproduced vehicles or any other kinds of things well hidden from the American public. Our black budget, for instance, garners $1.023 trillion every two years. It's over $500 billion a year. Right now, there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. Each one has an average cost of 17 to 19 billion dollars. Each one is uh, built in the site. Uh, oh, it used to be it'd take a year to two years to build each one, and now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. Uh, uh, my colleague. Uh, Al Bielik has actually been on some of the high-speed railways, uh, the magneto-leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach 2 train and floats off a, floats off of a single rail at a, a three-quarters of an inch off the rail and is uh, what you'd call high-tech. We have nothing like this on the surface. Uh, the public basically has been totally lied to we're considered stupid or even moronic in some cases. Uh, it's got to stop. If, if we're going to gain our country back, we must, and I repeat, must, regain, we must instill in our public officials, anybody that goes and does public service, they must tell us the truth. If they cannot do this, then, then they must be impeached or they must, must be removed from office. If this cannot occur, if, if the truth cannot totally come out, the, the, I, there are reasons for secrecy, for instance, but if the truth cannot totally come out, 
uh, what's the use in us having anything called freedom? Okay, now I have pictures here that I'm going to show you during the break in artifacts. And I ask you to kind of look at them but not handle them. I have actual crashed retriever metal from Roswell, New Mexico. It's given to me when I was 14 years old. For instance, I've got other things. I've got pieces, pieces of titan this piece of titanium, a special titanium alloy made for everything from the original SR-71 Blackberry, that's an old hat now. Uh, F-117A is their old hat now. Uh, they're making a whole new class of hypersonic above Mach 5 aircraft that employ they employ extremely modern charged particle beam weapons. They don't even use lasers anymore. Uh, computer enhanced imaging radar. Although it's used in helicopters for public surveillance, computer enhanced imaging radar, and in satellite technology, uh, the brand new kit on the block is a, is a kind of infrared technology uh, where a, a satellite a, 150,000 miles out in a geosynchronous orbit, or not quite geosynchronous orbit, but, but these spy satellites can literally look in and see a dime on the floor, say on your kitchen floor. They have a resolution factor of 99.999961. Uh, this particular piece of metal, I'm going to drop it on the floor here, it'll kind of ring like a bell. You can't break it. Withstand temperatures in excess of 7,500 degrees Fahrenheit. It has niobium in it. It also has muronite in it, element 123. Yeah, please do. Uh, it's in a, it's in a non-crystalline form. This is just kind of a dripping off of the out of the main crucible. Here's a crystalline example. It's in the scalenohedral crystalline form. We got this from the large grays uh, technology. Uh, this is grown in the confines of, of outer space, which has not quite a super vacuum, but uh, by the way, this is capable of withstanding temperatures in excess of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's great for uh, certain parts of aircraft. Uh, this kind of material I work with on a daily basis. Up here we have a transparency of 